Hello Internet, Solid Sam here for another little video. This one is going to be about scanning your art. It's a common question that comes up in my classes. Most scanners these days, when you scan the work, the blacks aren't true black and you don't get also pure white. And the way you fix this, I find, for me anyway, especially with line art, is using levels. Now, I use the layer effects levels. You can also use it through the menu. But I prefer the layers because the effects aren't permanent. Now notice that the histogram here has these two mountains, right? One on the right, one on the left. Some of them look differently, but with a black and white image like this, you usually just get two. What those are are representations of the black pixels and the white pixels. So we're going to go into each color channel. I, co I scan in color because I've got color lines in my pencils. And individually, at each color channel, the red, green, and blue, and yeah, I'm working in three color, not four, uh, I move the ends in to the peaks first of the mountains. And then the middle, middle tone arrow, I move to the middle of the valley. This is just a start. Now, again, the reason I like using the level setting version, version, version of layers is that it's all undoable or, modify, or changeable. Uh, if you did this in the regular control L levels way, it would alter the file permanently. And you see as we pull in the sides, what we're doing is the, 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 the slider determines for the, the right and the left where the white and black will follow, fall. And when you've tucked them in like that, you can see when I turn it off and on how much crisper it's made the lines. But I still see when we zoom in that my blacks have some irregularities in them and I, I'm not getting as crisp a line as I'd like. So I can take it further just by clicking there, see? And now I go back to the red, green, and blue and I'm going to pull the slider even further. So I'm all the way to the other side of the mountains. This I wouldn't do this for tonal art, but for clean black and white lines, you can pretty much go all the way into the valley in the middle there. So you see, I've got everything on the right side of that mountain. Now, basically, these mountains are representations of all the black or near black pixels, all the dark pixels. And they're, imagine them stacked up on top of each other instead of spread out over the image. And that's how you come you get those, those mounds. So now I'm pulling in for all the white pixels or all the lighter pixels. And the middle range is so low because there's no real gray pixels. And you see now I've tucked it in tightly on both sides. I have a really crisp image. I've still got some of that blue showing up, but we're going to show you how to get rid of that in a second. But look at how crisp this is. See? It's good. Now, once you've got this to where you like it, you hit OK. And I select everything. I do a select all. And copy. And paste in... I, I, I copy all layers to get the effects that I've captured and paste in a new layer. So now I have a version of the art with the changes. And you know, if I turn off the effect, I can see what it used to look like. Now for this new version, I'm going to go in and I'm going to use Color Replace. And I'm going to pick the blue, the dark heart of that blue there. It's like a turquoise blue. It's from the blue pencil I used for penciling. And actually, in this case, I, it was my, my printed blues. And I'm using the fuzziness slider to select as much of the blue as I can in one go. And then I hit lightness all the way to the end, and you see what happens. And if I select a little bit more around wherever I see some blue, I can get rid of the rest. And you can scan around. There will be slight variations in shades. In here I can see some blue, so I'll zoom in and select some of that. Now I don't want to take so much that I'm take biting into the black. But all of the color, I want to drop all of that out. So I just have black and white. I can turn off and on the preview to check it. See, it's not changing the art. I'm not erasing anything important. And if I like it, I just hit OK when it's ready. So that's how you get crisp black and white lines. In another video, I'll show you how you do this with gray toned art. Uh, it's a slightly different process, but it's basically the same idea. You just uh, leave a little more slack in terms of not bringing the sliders in quite as tight so that your values and your grays are still present. And that'll be in the next video.